Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining today with our live. Um, if you're new here, my name's Deidre from Our Upcycled Life, and I'm an upcycler, a repurposer, do lots of DIYs. Let's turn the uh, sound off. Sometimes technology, guys. Oh, goodness. I think we're good now. Nope, we're not. Okay, now we're good. Um, and I do lots of DIY and crafting. So happy to have you following along here. If you've been on a live before, I love for everybody that's watching to go down in the comments and let me know where you're watching from because it's it's so cool because there's people from all over the world that join here and we craft together. So if you're here, go to the comments, let me know where you're watching from. And today is going to be all about um, using scrap wood and turning them into signs to make cash. This is my main source of crafting um, that I sell. These wooden signs sell really well, especially seasonal. And all of the wood that I use is usually wood that I've just found. I've sourced it for free, painted it up, turned it into a sign, and I can sell them and make money. I sell all of my stuff locally, but there's so many areas where you can sell these signs. You can sell them Facebook Marketplace, Etsy, uh, locally to a store, friends and family, craft sales, if you have a booth. And the thing that I love about these are um, you can customize them. You don't need to have a Cricut. You don't need to have stencils. All you need is a bottle of Mod Podge and a printer, some chalk paint and scrap wood, and you are in business. And if you're dedicated to this and you are making signs, um, you can make a lot of money doing this and it's a really great side hustle. So let's go to the comments already. We have Maine, Oregon, um, Alabama, New Jersey, Ohio, the UK, Mississippi. So this is so neat. It's so fun to see where everybody is watching from and I appreciate all of you here for all of your support on my channel, on my Patreon, as my channel members. Um, I really appreciate it. And I hope you're finding lots of value in everything that I'm doing. If you have, as I'm working along here, I'm gonna put the camera down in a second. Uh, if you have any questions about this technique or you're having any problems, you've tried it and you're having some issues, go to the comments because I can guide you along and I can help you and um, probably let you know what you're doing wrong. And if for some reason, um, you don't get the answer. You can always follow me on, on Instagram, on Facebook, and you can send me pictures over there. And as soon as I see a picture, as soon as I have a picture in front of me, I know 100% what is going on and I can guide you through it. And I love doing that. And um, I'm really good about answering my messages. So that's another option too. We got Kansas, Cape Cod, Indiana, South Carolina. Let's get this camera turned down and I'm gonna show you what I'm making. We're just gonna switch tripods here, guys. Hang on, hang on here to my trusty overhead. We'll get it so everything's lined up properly. Okay, hi from the middle of nowhere, Missouri. I thought I lived in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> okay, so these are the two graphics that we are going to be working with today. I've already made these into signs. I've already done the beginning prep of the signs because when we're doing a live, it's really hard to um, paint the sign and have it dry and then put the graphics on because the graphics have to sit overnight for them to work well. So I did these up yesterday in preparation for the live today. But we are going to do this graphic and this graphic. If you are a Patreon member, my graphics club, which is a monthly graphic subscription club, um, you have already received these graphics. You've already gotten them in your inbox and maybe you're even already crafting with them. If you are a channel member, you can use, oh, and if you're a Patreon, you can get 70% off of any previous graphics that uh, you haven't grabbed um, before you join the graphic club. 
If you're a channel member, you have a discount code for 50% off. You can pick these up in my Etsy store. Make sure you're using your discount code. And if you wanna join either of those programs, the links are already down in the description already and you can click on them and check them out. But these are fantastic, I love them. Both are going to be really great sellers. This one for summer, of course, this is for the 4th of July and uh, I am printed these off just on my laser jet printer and I haven't reversed the text on these because I just wanted to show you what they were going to look like. If you are going to be using these on these signs, then these have to be reversed. If you're getting these graphics out of my Etsy store or through my graphic club, they're already reversed. You don't need to worry about it. And I do have a video that will show you how to reverse. Uh, I'll put that down. I think it's already in the description actually on how to reverse and how to make these signs into something bigger because what I did is this, let's see if I can bring this up a bit. This is, Maybe we're gonna work this way because it's gonna fit in our screen better. Um, this is a scrap piece of wood that I did this sign on. So you can see that this is smaller. So what I've done is I've enlarged this to fit on this whole piece of wood. I have a tutorial that will take you through all the steps on how to do this if you wanna make a larger sign on a bigger piece of wood. This was made up yesterday uh, and it sit, sat overnight, so it's now ready to rub the paper off and then see the graphics underneath. This was printed off reversed, printed off on my laser jet printer. You can also use an inkjet. It's a little bit more tricky, but you can use an inkjet. And used my Mod Podge mat. I find that it works the best. And you can use Mod Podge gloss, but just think about using a gloss, you're gonna have your graphic have that glossy look also. So that's why I like using the mat. And um, let it sit for 24 hours and now we're ready to rub it off. I just have a dish of uh, water and a little sponge. And love these graphics, thank you. I do too, I love them. And I love making graphics, they're so much fun. I actually, in my Patreon club this week, I asked everyone for suggestions on what kind of graphics they'd like me to make and add to uh, the program. And I got some really great ideas. So if you're a Patreon member, keep a watch out because um, you'll see some of those coming out in the next couple of weeks. So I'm just gonna wet the graphic. I like doing them in sections. Just gonna wet the graphics until it just starts to show through. I'm using a really cheap computer paper. This is just the Amazon Basics computer paper. I think it's 20 pound. Um, it works the best. And uh, if you're using a really thick computer paper, just imagine you're gonna have to rub off more paper. So the thinner paper you use, the less you have to rub off and the better it will work for you. So the base of this sign I painted with um, some, well, let me see here, what have I got underneath? Some red. So we did red and then we did a little bit of black and then we did white chalk paint. And then I just kind of splattered on I don't know if you can see here, I kind of splattered on some red and some blue to give it that patriotic feel and uh, let it completely dry. And then I added my graphics on it. And then we just rubbed the paper off. And I people, one of the biggest questions that I get asked is, can I rub this off with a sponge? It hurts my fingers. Well, um, I find, you can start with the sponge, and I'll just show you a section here. You can start with the sponge, but to finish it off, I feel like you have to use your fingers so you can feel that all the paper is gone. Uh, the sponge just doesn't do that great of a job uh, taking off the last little bits, and then you can't feel. So if you're using the sponge, you can't feel if you've maybe rubbed off too much and now you're done down to the graphic, and then you'll start to rub the graphic off. So I do the bulk of it. You can do the bulk of it with a sponge and then the last little bit switch to your fingers if you do find that it bothers your fingers. So we have Sweden. Hello Marie, thanks for joining along. So we've got the main majority and don't, good thing you can't see because I'm just putting all this little paper on my floor. I'll clean it up after the video. <laughs> I, I promise I will. Uh, I'm just gonna rub all this paper off on this flag and 
I really like this because you can kind of see that fleck of red and blue underneath. It looks great. Let me know, have you tried this technique and have you had success with it? Uh, I always love to see what other people are creating, especially with this technique because it gives me all kinds of inspiration and, um, and I get ideas from you guys all of the time. So you can see sometimes I'll use the palm of my hand too. That works and you can feel the paper kind of ball up underneath. And um, you can tell, you can feel with your fingers when you've got all of that paper rubbed off. Let's go back to our sponge and we're gonna do this piece right here. This is a little firework right here. We're gonna rub that off. And that looks good. And like I was saying before, if you're handy and you can make your own graphics, you can customize this so easy. If you're handy with Canva, you can make some graphics in Canva, in Canva and um, Christmas ornaments, Halloween. There's so many possibilities. But if you can't be bothered, I have all kinds in my Etsy store that you can always grab and they're really affordable that you can craft with. And, and any of my graphics that you're using, um, they're not copyrighted. So you can use them on a project and then you can sell them and I don't have a wish, an issue like that. I just want you guys to be able to use them and have fun and make some extra money. I'm excited to try this technique. If you haven't tried this technique, you gotta give it a try. Where are you from? That isn't also in the middle of nowhere. I am in Ontario, Canada, in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Let's do this other one over here. Get this up a little bit so you can see more. Bring this into the frame. Another little splash of fireworks here. And this piece of wood is just a hunk of plywood. It was actually in the burn pile. I might have even gotten this one at my mom and dad's. My dad has a great big wood pile of stuff that he uses in his fireplace. And whenever I go there, I always raid it for any good pieces. And I think I just grabbed this piece of plywood out of there and that's where it came from. So. I've made this sign on a piece of wood that was rescued and painted it, put a graphic on it, and probably by the time I'm finished, um, I'm probably gonna be able to sell it for $25, $30. That's pretty good profit uh, to make some extra money. Okay, let's maybe start, let's do this section here next. I'll just rub off. And if you have any graphics uh, that you would like to see in my Etsy store that you would like to create with, um, let me know in the comments because I'm always looking for ideas and new graphics to make and I wanna make graphics that you guys will be able to use and sell um, and will be good for you. So you can see I'm not using very much water. I'm just enough, just putting enough just so you can start to see the graphics show through and then rubbing off the paper. Oh, I don't sound Canadian. <laughs> I actually, my English is really bad. I have a lot of slang and I say a lot of words. Uh, most people say that they can tell I'm Canadian right away, but yes, I am. I am right in the middle of Canada. I'm about an hour and a half outside of Ottawa. So I'm just gonna keep rubbing this off here. This says, Sparklers, bottle rockets, and Roman candles. And I've made this graphic because um, so many of my followers are American. And I know you guys really celebrate the uh, July 4th holiday. So that's why I made this graphic. And I'm actually in the process of making a Canadian one for our um, Canada Day festivities. So that one's gonna show up in my shop this week. Now I've just put some scrolls along the bottom here. Um, South Carolina, what is the best Cricut to start with? I have a Cricut, what is mine? Um, I can't remember what the name, I, you know what? I, uh, it's a click, it's a Cricut Explore. I've actually had mine for about two years now and I don't use it very often. I just find that any technique that I want to do, other, the Cricut, I'm gonna rephrase that. The Cricut is fantastic 
for making t-shirts um, that you need anything that is iron-on. Of course, you want to use a Cricut. And I have a Cricut Explore. Um, but as far as what you should start with, unfortunately, I'm not really familiar. So if anybody in the uh, audience here is familiar with what a Cricut would be the best to start with, um, put it in the comments and uh, we can help Camilla out and let her know which is the best one to buy. Now, I do have the Cricut Explore. I love it, but I might only use it once every couple months. Uh, the rest of the time, I just make my signs like this. I find it's really expensive, especially if you're using the vinyl and you want, if you want to make signs and sell them and you've got to buy vinyl and do it that way, it can get pretty costly. I just find this is so cost efficient and I've gotten so good at it and so efficient at it. I don't pull my Cricut out. We got Wyoming here. Welcome. Okay. So now these, this is a long piece. This is longer than a piece of paper. So I cut this piece out, cut this piece out and then cut this piece out. And then when I'm putting it on my sign, I want to make sure it's straight. So I actually, you can, I don't know if you can see it here. I put a little bit of tape on it to hold it all together when I Mod Podged it. So it would stay in line. So that's a little tip too. If you've got a bigger piece, tape it together and then put it on your sign. So you know, it's going to all line up. Otherwise you might get some graphics that are crooked. And I, um, I may have made a few signs that were crooked, just a few or a lot. <laughs> I'm not very good at measuring. I make these things and then get all excited and I throw them down on the piece of wood and then they're like crooked and not pretty. So take your time when you're putting the graphics down and making sure they're lining up exactly where you want them. Um, I started with a Cricut Joy. I also have the Cricut Explore 3. I use my Joy more than your Explore. Okay, so there's some good information. Uh, Okay, lots are coming in about what Cricut to buy. So go down in the comments, read through them, and uh, you'll probably get your answer there. Yeah, so there's some, thanks Sue for letting me know about that. I want to try this technique and do some old slot shutters. That, yeah, so if you can find some old shutters, I deconstruct them and I take all the slats from the shutters and I turn them into ornaments. And at Christmas time, you can personalize them and turn them into Christmas tree ornaments and probably one of my best sellers. So if you're out thrifting or you see any on Facebook Marketplace, uh, grab those shutters, deconstruct them, and you can turn them. Sometimes those big shutters will have like 50, 60 slats in them. That turns into 50 ornaments that I sell anywhere between five, seven, eight dollars a piece. So that's a great snag if you can follow those. If you can find those, I mean not follow those. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Now let's do the fireworks. Has anyone here used their Cricut to make signs? Or do you stick with just using this Mod Podge technique? I'm just interesting, interested in if you do find that the cost is quite high with buying the vinyl and weeding it and turning it into the signs and whether they sell well for you. Okay, we're just doing the fireworks now. And like I said before, this graphic is available in my Etsy store. If you're a Patreon member, this one has already come to you. You're probably already crafting with it. If you're a channel member, you can use your discount code. It's 50% off and um, grab this graphic and use it, craft with it, and sell what you're making if you want. Um, do you have a video on the shutter ornaments? I just got 10 shutters. Um, Jeez, I must have at some point, or maybe I did a live. I might have done a live. Let me look and if I can find it, I will put it down in the description afterwards and uh, you can watch it. I, I'm kind of thinking it might have been a live in around Christmas time. I made a bunch of these ornaments from five gallon stir sticks. Are ex excellent idea, stir sticks. If you can find stir sticks, uh, you can turn those into ornaments. And it's the same technique as this, other than you're just doing it on smaller pieces. Actually, I have 
Oh, goodness. Here we go. We're talking about this, and look, I have some here already. These are um, shutter slats that I already have painted. I haven't sanded them yet, but I will turn these into, I'll have to do a video on these now that I remember I had them. I'll drill a hole in the top, use some twine, turn these into ornaments, and these are from some shutters. I think I actually might have found these shutters in the dump and brought them all home and uh, took them apart. Another great thing is if you go to the dollar store, if you can't find shutters, if you go to the dollar store, get the garden stakes. You know the wooden garden stakes? If you can find those, they sometimes come in a package of like 10 uh, and you can cut those up and they make great ornaments too. Do you have a tutorial on how to adjust measurements with graphics? What about if it is a big sign? Yes, okay, so I do. And it's already, that I was already prepared. So that video is down in the description already. So after you watch this, you can go back and watch it. I will show you how to enlarge your graphic in Google Docs and then do exactly what I'm doing on a larger sign. It's a really good step-by-step -step process. It, it's easy and uh, I'll guide you through it. So I do have that tutorial that will show you how to do that. Um, I have an Epson Echo Tank inkjet printer and I love it. I have saved so much on ink. Okay, so if you have the Epson Echo Tank, will it work for this technique? That was actually a question that I got asked in my comments the other day and I couldn't give them the an answer because I've never tried them. So let me know, does your Echo Tank work for the reverse technique? I have a laser jet that I use and I'm telling you, I do a lot of these and I only buy ink about once every six to eight months. And I buy my ink on eBay actually. They're just refilled ones and it works perfect for me. We got Brazil in here, hi Paula. That is the link for the ornament shutters, okay. Did somebody find the link where I did the ornament shutter ones? I think it might've been around Christmas time. Hi, Marianne, thanks for joining. Okay, we're getting there. I'm talking instead of rubbing here. And I find that sometimes the palm of my hand works better than my fingertips sometimes. And you can tell when you've gotten all the paper rubbed off. Now, a lot of people, I will get messages saying, I can't figure out, I'm, I'm rubbing and rubbing and the paper's not coming off. What is going on is you just haven't rubbed enough. So you can see, I'm gonna bring this up a bit closer. So you can see here, see how there's still a haze? I'm just working in one little area, just with my little fingertip here. Now see the difference? It's gone, all the paper's gone, it feels smooth. There's still some on the E there. Just go in small sections, rub it. You can see the paper rub up underneath your finger and it's gone. If you're finding that it's drying out, dip your finger in the water and do it that way and then you don't have to put a whole bunch of water on it and just work in a small area at a time. South Africa, welcome. I have not tried the reverse technique but I print a lot of labels and decoupage to bottles and it works great. Okay, so that would be interesting. I'd like to know if anybody has an, uh, is it an echo tank or eco tank uh, printer and whether it works with this technique used the reverse graphic method the other day and I loved it. I'm glad that it worked out for you. I'm kind of get obsessed with it. I, know I sometimes I have to hold myself back because I find I do all this upcycling and then I kind of get excited and I think I have to put words on everything. Not everything needs words. Uh, so, but that's just me getting excited because I love this technique sometimes. So sometimes if, if you see me putting too many words on stuff, just say, hey, Deidre, roll back. Don't put words on everything and then I'll do a couple projects without words. <laughs> okay, I think we pretty much got, I have to work on this right here. There's still really hazy, but I'm just kind of showing you portion by portion. Now this is gonna be the all American. I'm gonna do my sponge to get the main majority of this one off. Just keep rubbing. And you don't have to use a lot of pressure it's just a light hand, and if as the wa the paper is getting moistened with the water, it rubs off really easy. If you're using too much water, which can be a problem, 
you will start the graphic, the Mod Podge will actually get reactivated underneath and it'll start to rub off. So you have to be careful with that and not using too much water. And that's why I like just doing small sections too, because I find if you wet it all, the water sits on that paper too much and it allows everything to, to soak in and um, you have more of a chance of rubbing that graphic off. First time viewer, Cindy, thank you. I'm so glad you found, you found me and I hope you find all kinds of great content here. We love new crafting friends. Uh, okay, thanks. How many pieces of paper did you use on this one? And what technique? Paint technique is beautiful. Okay, so this one, um, I used one, two, three, four, five sheets of paper. So I put it into my Google Docs, sized it around, and I printed it off on five different sheets of paper, sized it, sized it, sized it, and then kind of fit it together like a puzzle. So that's a little bit more advanced. So if you're new to sign making, don't start off with a great big sign like this. Just start off small and just do it on one sheet of paper that's just the size of a paper like this. But as you get more comfortable, then um, play around with making some bigger graphics and, uh, and sizing them up in Google Docs. And it's really easy to, you just kind of move your graphic around, print, move it around and print, and it works great. Um, Manitoba Janice, hello from Manitoba. Oh, Carrie Ann, thank you so much. That's amazing, thank you. That's nice, okay, so let's just do. Carrie Ann just gifted a membership, so that's fantastic. Thank you so much for being so generous. Okay, let's, I see now this one I've taped together again. Oh, now here, see, I've pulled off. You gotta be careful here. Let's rip this off. You can see some of the graphic rubbed off on that. That happens with this technique. I've done thousands and thousands of these signs. I've never had one sign that was absolutely perfect. This is a very rustic look. It's never going to be flawless. Like you can see here, there's a little bit is rubbed off. Um, that's just not the look of this technique. So if you're looking for something perfect, the Cricut is probably a better option for you. But if you like that distressed kind of worn look, then this is great. If you're just joining, I love down in the comments to know where you're watching from. So much fun to see people from all over the world. There's another piece of tape that I attached these two together. I have a sip of tea. Okay, we're almost here. We're almost finished this one. And what I'm going to do, I actually filmed the process of me, um, painting this board and putting the graphics on and after this is all done I'm going to finish this sign off I'll finish filming it and I'll put it on my regular channel not a live and then you can see the full tutorial of how I put this all together and I think that will be really helpful for you I know when I'm doing these lives it's uh you know you're not seeing the whole thing it's just kind of a portion of it it's still helpful but it's not like going right from start to finish so that's looking pretty good. I need to do some more work on the flag here, but it's uh, it looks pretty good. I love this graphic too, so much fun. We got Georgia, Texas, and Minnesota here crafting today. Okay, what do you guys think? I love this and I think it fit on this piece of plywood really nicely. Um, so I'm gonna after the video completely finish this one off and you'll be able to see that in my next video okay so let's do i got another one here to show you so this is this one organic fresh herbs i've had this one i think this one might have come out last week or the week before to my patreon members um and i've already sold quite a few of uh, signs with this graphic only because of the season it's like we're right in the throws of the garden and spring and summer season. So it's a really good seller right now. So this is just another scrap piece of wood and I loved it because it already was cut like this. I don't know what it was off of, 
but it already kind of had these um, cuts on it. You can see the back, it's just a hunk of plywood, again, that I've painted. And I did a really nice distressed paint technique underneath. I did film it, so you can see it in the next video. Uh, it'll probably be up next week, how I achieved it. But we're just going to start rubbing off the paper. Uh, I use the reverse graphic all the time, works great. Actually have rubbing to do today. I'm so glad I found, that's fun, Valerie. And anytime you're making signs, if you are following me on Instagram or Facebook, shoot me pictures because I love seeing them. And I love seeing how you use the graphics on all different uh, thrifted finds or um, projects that you're doing. And I've seen, you know, you'll mix and match stuff and it just gives me so much inspiration when I see them. So share away. I love getting them. Wiltshire, Tracy, welcome. Looks like an old chair seat. Hey, I wonder, I wonder if this was an old chair seat. It might've been, it might have been. I just think it kind of gives it character. And the other thing why these signs sell so well for me is they're one of a kind. You're not gonna find another sign that's shaped like this, painted like this, or has a graphic like this on it. Every sign is gonna be different. It's not gonna look mass produced. And I think that's why these do so well because it, you're not gonna go to Target or um, Walmart and find 85 of the same signs. This is an original and that makes it that much more fun too. Does this work on canvas? Yes, it does. Uh, so if you have a canvas that you've found at the dollar, at the thrift store or you've picked up a canvas at the dollar store, you can't do this technique right on the canvas. It, will, it won't stick. When you go to rub it off, it'll just rub off because there's almost like a, the canvas is almost like a rubberized material. I'm not quite sure what they put on it. But if you paint the, um, if you paint the graphic, the canvas with chalk paint, let the chalk paint dry, then you can do the technique on top of the chalk paint that's on the canvas. I've done it lots, works fantastic. Don't try to do it on bare canvas, do it on canvas that has been painted with chalk paint. How do you figure out what font to use? Do you use a specific font for certain words? Are you, <laughs> you are amazing at designing. Thanks, Tammy. You know what? It's just one, I am not a graphic designer. Um, I just love doing it. And I don't use the same fonts that much. I kind of play around. So every sign is, every graphic is gonna be different. I don't know, I just have fun doing it. And I like designing them. And I just, whatever I'm feeling that day is how I get created, how it gets created. And the fonts that I use is just whatever I pick and think looks good. So I'm really glad that you're liking them. Thank you. That's why I like your stuff, it's all unique. I think there's an old broken chair in my dad's junk pile. So yeah, um, I have a video out there somewhere. Might have done it last summer. I had an old chair um, base and I turned it into a coat rack and it turned out really fantastic. Uh, if, you, if you've seen that one, that was a really good way to repurpose and upcycle a chair seat. Is there a way to do it on glass? Um, if you wanna keep the glass clear, this technique will not work. Do you know what I mean? Like if you wanna keep your glass so you can still see through it, this technique won't work. The only way that it would work on glass is if you sprayed your glass with a spray primer and then painted on a coat of chalk paint and then you could do it on glass. But if you're trying to keep it so it's see-through, uh, it won't work. But if you've been following along, have you seen the video where I use shelf liner and the label sheets and I print on them and I make a DIY sticker and then you can take that sticker and you can put it on clear glass and it is unbelievable. It works so amazing. Um, and that's a really fun technique to do too. And I've got two or three videos on that technique on my channel that you can get step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that. But yes, if you wanna do it on glass, this technique, then it's gotta be painted with a primer and then chalk paint. 
Uh, will it work with chalked spray paint? I don't know why it wouldn't, it should work. If the spray paint is a chalk paint, then I would say it should work, 100%. I'm gonna have to go back and watch more videos. <laughs> There's, I've got so many projects in my library. Uh, I, I kind of forget what I've done and what I haven't done. Um, but yeah, if you've got a few days, go back, get some inspiration because there's lots there. I actually, yesterday, I think it was yesterday, I put up a video with 25 upcycling projects. It's a long one. It's like two hours, but if you grab a coffee or a tea, um, it's full of inspiration and all kinds of ideas. So look around. How do your hands stay looking so soft and pretty with all this rubbing and stuff? Maybe it's like, it's you know when you use pumice and you're rubbing off all of, that's probably why. <laughs> it, it's, it, my hands uh, certainly get a workout, that's for sure, doing all of this. I love um, this floral on this. Now, I think after I finish these, now, so you'll have to watch the video when I complete these, but I'm kind of feeling after I get these all rubbed off, I might go back in with some acrylic paint and just maybe paint on some color onto these. Maybe do some nice pastel colors on the flowers just to give it a pop. That would look nice and that's great because this technique, of course, my laser printer only prints black ink. I'm actually kind of on the fence on, I'm, I'm probably going to buy a color laser printer, but for now I only have black ink. But if you wanna give your signs a little pop of color, just after you've rubbed off all the paper, just get out your acrylic paint and a little paintbrush and just detail with the acrylic paint. And then when you seal it up afterwards with your polyacrylic sealer, um, that color will be sealed into your uh, sign and you'll be good to go. And it just kind of breaks up just that plain black sign. Um, have you tried a coloring book page? That's a good idea, that, you know what? I haven't. So I presume what you mean is taking a, a page out of a coloring book and then trying this technique out. I haven't. Hmm, that might be something to try, but I know what you could do. Just, okay, so if you wanted to use a coloring page, the first thing that I would do, if you have a laser or an inkjet, photocopy the coloring book page and then it's going to print off with the toner that's going to work with this technique and then you can use it that way. But you can, but if you do the, the um, photocopy first, then it doesn't matter if you ruin your coloring book page. So then you could try the coloring book page and see if it works too, but then you'll still have the photocopy to uh, use if it doesn't work. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. But if you have a coloring book page, you could definitely photocopy it with your printer and then do this technique. And then you could use it over and over again. That's a great idea if you have a nice coloring page that you like. So this is rubbing off really well. And you can see, I love this paint technique. And I did a little pop of color in this one. It was kind of a, almost like a celery color. I'm gonna have to sign up to the Etsy. Yes, head over. So there, there's two different, um, ways that you can get graphics. You can just go to my Etsy store and you can grab the graphics. You can join my channel here. And if you join the channel, then you'll get a 50% off discount code for any graphics in my store, bundles and everything. But I also have a graphics club and it's a monthly membership. But what you're gonna do is you're going to get um, weekly, everything that I list brand new that week is going to be delivered to your inbox and you're guaranteed by the end of the month that you signed up in to get 20 graphics. I think last month ended up being 27 graphics and the month before was 30 graphics. It's always gonna be more than 20, but you're gonna get all of the new graphics that I have designed sent into your inbox. It's $6.99 a month, works out to like 35 cents a graphic. Uh, which is a fantastic deal because most of my graphics, I think they're $2.50. So if you're interested and you're going to be crafting a lot and you're going to be selling them, it's a really affordable way to get graphics. And I've already done the work for you. Plus, I know these are going to be good sellers. So if you're making signs with them, I know they're going to sell well for you. Those links are down below in the description. 
I believe you can Mod Podge directly on gloss and then use a cutout on top layer of a printed. Yep, you could probably try that. Can it be sold if it's a coloring page? Asking due to copyright infringements. I get so scared. That, I don't know. I'm not sure about that. That might be an issue. If you're just doing it for fun, just to do with your kids or grandkids, or you just wanna make something, then it's not an issue at all. But if you're gonna be making stuff and selling it, that might be something you might want to look into. Cause I know there are some copyright issues with that stuff. I don't have any issues with my stuff being copyrighted. You can use any of it, but I know some of the bigger companies that could be an issue. Uh, okay, so we're getting here. Oh, you know what? I love this sign. This one might have to stay in my own garden. <laughs> That's my problem. I make all these things and then I don't want to sell them. Um, if this was going to go out in a garden, uh, these still need to have some stuff kind of um, rubbed off them, off of them. But when these are all finished, I seal these up with polyacrylic sealer. You can seal them up with your Mod Podge, but I don't like the look of Mod Podge as a top coat. I like using polyacrylic sealer. So polyacrylic sealer comes in two formulas. You can get your indoor or your outdoor. And if you're gonna put this outside, then you wanna seal it up with some outdoor polyacrylic sealer. I've had one sign that's been outside for, I think five years now that I sealed with some outdoor polyacrylic sealer. It still looks fantastic. So it does seal it up really well. If you're doing that, you wanna do all around the edges and the back when you're gonna have something that's gonna go outside. Um, I need this sign from kitchen. Would look great on that empty spot above my pantry door. Wouldn't that, I know, I love this one. I even like the, really like the color. Works for candle holders, pencils, utensil vases. Yes, great. Okay, so there we go. So I love doing these videos because I love being able to teach people how they can just take scrap wood, minimal cost, make some crafts, even if you only wanna do it for personal use, but if you wanna make some extra money, this is a really great technique to do it and um, they sell well. So I hope these are helping you and giving you some guidance. And like I said, if you still have any other questions, I'm always in my DMs on Instagram or Facebook. You can always catch me over there. So I think I'm gonna sign off. I hope these were helpful. Um, and thanks for following along. I really appreciate it. I'm going to do this, uh, the finish these signs up. They're going to be in a video next week so you can see them completely finished and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for watching guys. Take care.